Leviticus 14, starting at verse 33. I hope you can picture this. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When ye be come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in the house of the land of your possession, and he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seemeth to me there is, as it were, a plague in the house. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest go into it to see the plague, that all that is in the house be not made unclean, and afterwards the priest shall go in to see the house. And he shall look on the plague, and behold, if the plague is in the walls of the house, with hollow strakes, greenish or reddish, which in sight are lower than the wall, almost like grooves, in other words, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. And the priest shall come again the seventh day and shall look and behold, if the plague be spread in the walls of the house, then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which the, plagues is, the plague is. And they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city. That means, without the city means outside of the city. And he shall cause the house to be scraped within, mm, around about. And they shall pour out the dust that they scraped off without the city, outside of the city, that is, into an unclean place. And they shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones, and he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. And if the plague come again and break out in the house, after that he hath taken away the stones, and after he hath scraped, the house, and after it is plastered, then the priest shall come and look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house. It is unclean. And he shall break down the house, the stones of it, the timber thereof, and all the mortar of the house, and he shall carry them forth out of the city into an unclean place. Moreover, he that goeth into the house all the while that is shut up shall be unclean until the even. And he that lieth in the house shall wash his clothes, and he that eateth in the house shall wash his clothes. And if the priest shall come in and look upon it, and behold, the plague has not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean because the plague is healed. Now I'm going to stop right there. All right. I'm going to break it down in everyday terms. If Peter is a priest, and I call him and tell him with his other co-workers to come check out my house, they're to check it out. They do all the little rituals, and we wait seven days, and... I've cleaned up my act, and I'm good. But if the thing has spread, and leprosy does not just touch skin, leprosy touches walls, it touches material, it touches a lot of things in your house. And let's take it all the way to the fretting leprosy. Now, we have taken things out, out to an unclean place and burnt it. We have scraped, we have replastered, we have done all kind of stuff. And it's still spreading. The house has to be broken down, y'all. Bit by bit, stone by stone, timber by timber, and brought out of the, the place that it sits into an unclean place. Now, let me share this with you. When push comes to shove, sometimes you got to throw some things out of your life. And there are times... When you've got to open your mouth and confess. Now, you know where I'm going now. Who can think of a chapter that a new testament?
Testament chapter this brings to mind. Somebody say something. Think of a New Testament chapter. Okay. Well, since everybody is a scholar or asleep, I'm going to tell you for the sake of time. James chapter 5. And I'm just reading a short portion of that. James chapter 5 says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Verse 13. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. If he has committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I'm stopping there. Listen, leprosy is, uh, is symbolic of sin. Now, there are times, and I'm going to tell you this, and it's not going to sound good, it's not going to be pretty. There are times we have sin in our hearts, and there are times that sin in our hearts exposes itself. And when the sin in our hearts expose itself, sometimes we have to pay the piper, and there are things we must lose in our lives. We must voluntarily get rid of some things and other things we must lose. It's called consequences. Now I'm going to tell you this. When something is hidden in your heart, it shows up. If you are not coming clean about it. You hear what I'm saying? If you're not coming totally clean, God knows how to bring it to the surface. When you boil any kind of meat in a pot, you may have went, rinsed it. You may have washed it in dishwashing liquid. I knew a woman used to do that before she cooked her meat. And she got it squeaky clean, cut off all the fat she could find. But when it was time to boil, there was still scum to deal with. She had to skim the scum off the surface. That meat would sit in that boiling water over time. The scum would always rise to the surface of that water. And after she removed all the scum, then she would season the water. Now, let me tell you this. There are times when a person, I'm talking in symbols now. There are times when a person doesn't realize they've come down with something. Have you ever had a time where you were going through your daily routine and then all of a sudden you start breaking out in these perfuse sweats and you're wondering what is going on? It's not hot in here. I'm not a, mid, a middle-aged woman going through hot flashes. What is this? And you realize your system is fighting something you were not aware was there. You picked up a virus, you picked up a cold, a flu, a strep throat, something you picked up, and your body is fighting it all. Hence, the fever. Hence, the sweat. Now, when you have things going on in your life, when you have things going on in your heart and in your mind, and you are making allowances, excuses, and rationalizing, and that's not the case for everybody. I know that. So I'm not beating up on you. I'm just making a case scenario right now. What ends up happening is Jack oftentimes jumps out the box. And Jack will jump out the box in many different ways, y'all. When I used to worry about my finances, Mama Sita would get grumpy. When I would be hurt, 
by something somebody said to me and I didn't deal with it right then and there, Mama Sita, her temperament would be short. There were times when I was a kid when I thought that people were making fun of me and putting me down. I would get short-tempered and I would go and be by myself and brood and pout and have all these emotional issues and reactions because I wasn't expressing myself. And then I'd go into a, to a volatile outrage and I would have my books in my hands and I would go off. The teachers would look at me like, what is wrong with this kid? I would go off. And when I would go off, the books would fly in one direction and whatever else was in my hand would fly in the other direction and they would go up against the wall and I would scream at the top of my lungs all kind of four, three, four, and five little words. Mm -hmm. Now, and what I would end up doing is having outbursts, uncontrollable outbursts. Why? Because something was brewing inside of me. There was a storm that I could not control. And the storm I could not control was because I was not skilled in communication, I would bottle my emotions up. I would bottle up my hurts, bottle up my disappointments, bottle up my anger. And I was not managing my emotions well at all. And I would end up like a, a pot under too much pressure. The lid would fly off and all the crap would boil all over the stove and make a mess. And that's what I would do, I would make a mess. And sometimes when I made the mess, other people got hurt. Yes, this little sweet old lady would jump on somebody and start hitting. It was usually the person that had been hurting my feelings all day. But I would start hitting. And there are some of you, if you don't handle what's going on inside of you now, one day you're going to end up hitting on folks when you should be keeping your hands to yourself. You'll end up hurting somebody or sending them to the hospital, crushing their spirit because your spirit is jacked up, crushing their mind because your mind is screwed on backwards crushing their emotions because your emotions are scarred up. And that's another form. All participants are muted. That's another form of incontinence. When push comes to shove, some of y'all make a mess all, you all over yourself. You can't control your mouth. You can't control your temper. You blow up on people, and then you got to apologize. You blow up on this one. You blow up on that one. And they didn't mean any harm, but they got on your nerves. They're not perfect. And you can't tolerate imperfection in other people, even though you're jacked up and toe up from the flow up. It happens. It's a human nature thing. I don't know why, but in my opinion, in my little humble little old lady opinion, it's because we're not dealing with me. We're not dealing with the self that we want to avoid. And since we avoid that self, everybody else has to pay the penalty of not avoiding us. When you have issues like that, that's not something for you to hide. Because I'm going to tell you, the Bible says, if you hide your sins, God will expose you. 
But here's the sweet sign, the sweet spot of walking with the Lord. If you expose your sins, God will hide and cover you. We have to want to get help, y'all. Everybody on this planet, at one point or another, needs help. We need help. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. It's not Lynn. It's not Peter. It's not Andrea standing in the need of prayer. It's me standing in the need of prayer, Lord. It's not Anthony's fault that I'm toe up from the flow up. It's not Matt's fault that I don't know how to handle my emotions. It's not Lynn's fault that I am actually, if I were to truly be honest, a big baby who was underdeveloped emotionally. As they say in the streets, now whoops, there it is. I said, whoops, there it is. If we don't handle ourselves, we will end up hurting others. God will have to handle us. I don't ever want God to have to take me to the woodshed, y'all. I don't ever want that. And let me tell you, I don't care what the reasons are. I don't care what the frustrations are, what your money issues are what your job situations are, how many people are coming against you. The grace of God is more than sufficient for you to use self-control and not create victims around you because you can't handle peeing on yourself emotionally. Now, I ain't talking about just being emotionally scarred. I ain't just talking about that. Everybody isn't loaded with emotional scars. Some of us are just loaded with pride and arrogance. Some of us see some things as emotional scars and they weren't scars at all. But it comes as a very handy excuse when we spew our venom out on other people. When life doesn't happen our way. And you walk around like Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. I handled it my way. I said it my way. I expressed myself my way. When there were times you should have kept your big trap shut, walked away, took a nice long sprint around the block or around the city, Walk that stuff off and have a good talk with the Lord. Okay, Lord, what's wrong with me? Not, Lord, did you see what they did? Lord, how many times do I have to tell them? Lord, look at them. They don't even want to be bothered with me. There's something wrong with them. I don't know. It just seems like they're just walking in denial. No, half the time it's us. Half the time, it's not that they're in denial. They're in avoidance mode. They're avoiding you because they don't want to deal. And we don't see it because in our our minds, like I said on Saturday, our stuff don't stink. Bad English, but you get me. (laughs) Anyway, so ask God the best prayer you can pray at all times. Because see, all the things you're asking God to do in your life, all the things you want God to do through you as a blessing to others. Baby, a surgeon cannot do surgery. Coming in like I did today, only the surgeon is coming in with a hangover because he's been partying all night. He's been up all night doing the do, doing the dirty, doing the nasty, doing stuff he has no business doing when he should have been hitting the books and getting the rest he needs so he can do the surgery and save a person's life. So here he comes strolling into the surgical room with his party clothes on, hadn't washed his hands, half asleep, getting over a hangover. He's wiped out. He's out of it. 
and somebody on that table is getting ready to die because he's going to mishandle everything. Some of us live our lives in such a haphazard way that we end up doing more damage than good. We want to be a blessing, but we end up doing more damage, trying to be a blessing. There are times when God says, be still and know that I am God. See, I'll tell you what some of the reason for some of our problems. It's not all emotional scars and psychological scars and misgivings and mistreatment and misunderstandings and well, no, no, no. It's not all that. Some of it is that we don't know he's God. We don't really get that part of the puzzle. We have an inclination. We have our theories. We have our hypothesis. I don't know the plural of that, so I'm not going to mess it up. I hate when people use words out of context. <laughs> Even when I do it, I hate it. So we have to be very careful as we get to know God. There are times when we have to shelf ourselves. Shelfing ourselves is a very painful thing to do. If you break a leg, break an arm, break a hand, break a foot, you're going to be shelved because the doctor is definitely going to have you in a nice big old cast. And all that you could do, you can't. You're limited. Your movements are limited. Your abilities are limited. Your endurance is limited. Everything is limited by that one injury that needs to heal. And some of you, you either need to heal or you need a great big bath. You need some cleaning time. Lay down and take your antibiotics and get rid of that virus that keeps making you break out in a sweat. Some of you have fever. Some of you have chills and fever. Whatever your case is, like Leviticus chapter 14, there, there are symptoms that come to the surface that show you that somewhere inside there, there is a problem. And for most of us, the problem is S-I-N. It's called the flesh. And we all, I don't care how saved and sanctified we think we are, we all slip in and out of that flesh from time to time. Now, you know if you got to take a bath every day or something's going to start rising up to your nose, you know you better take a spiritual bath. You better get in that mirror and check yourself by the word. You want to be a vessel of God? You want God to use you to his glory? Baby, you better go in and possess your land before something else possesses it. Because if you're out of control in any area of your life, that's the area you need to concentrate in on. For those of you who think I got it all together, I'm working on my areas of discipline. I lack discipline in a lot of areas. There are things that God has to show me because dumb diddy dumb dumb doesn't see some things. So I have to constantly say, Lord, Show me, don't let me trip over myself and I don't see the flaw in me. We can never get to the point where we think, oh, I don't really have many problems, I'm good. As soon as you get through with one onion layer, you got another layer that God's going to peel back. Woo-wee! Boy, that sure is pungent. Been sitting there a while. And God said, I didn't deal with that then, but I'm ready to deal with it now. Are you willing to see it? Or are you willing to concede to God's judgment? 
his judgment call, not his booty whooping. When I say judgment, I mean, if God calls a spade a spade, are you willing to agree with him? Or are you going to come up with all these reasons why he's misunderstanding you too? Let me share this with you, and then I'm going to be done. When I was in the speech, I was on the speech. uh, Let me rephrase that. When I was on the speech, the... Help me, Father. When I was on the forensics team at Pasadena City College, I was there specifically to function in the area of Reader's Theater and oral interpretation. I wasn't much on debate. I wasn't much on extemporaneous speeches and all that. Uh, back then, I, I didn't have the confidence level I have now. I was not saved. I was full of all of my little whatever. And so the only area I felt confident in was in the dramatics. Yeah, I'm a drama queen. You, you can see that by all the ham that's in my blood. Yeah, I am a ham. So what I ended up doing was I was in a reader's theater with Tommy and Millie. And we were rehearsing, and Dr. Salisbury, who was the chairman of the speech department, volunteered to come and help us rehearse. Dr. Salisbury, after we would do our scene, we would go from scene to scene to scene. And Dr. Salisbury let us know he was going to stop us quite frequently. And he hoped we would not become offended because he said, I'm going to pick you apart. Now, this was the reason we were rehearsing, y'all. We wanted to win first place in the nation. We were going to the national tournament. No, we didn't get first place. But he picked at us so much we ended up winning an award. One time we got second place, one time we got third place. Now, listen to this. My question to you is, do you wanna win in this race? Or do you just wanna slide and get by? You gotta get out your comfort zone if you wanna win. Dr. Salisbury, we would say a few lines. He said, okay. Now, Pat, when you say that line, you have to say it with authority or you're going to weaken that moment. That moment right there is a strong moment. But you cannot be passive when you handle that line. So find a way to give it strength and conviction. The people out here need to believe that you believe what you're saying. Now, Tommy, don't turn left when you're directing your comment at Millie. That weakens the moment. That takes the focus off of what you're saying. It's distracting. That man knit and picked and he would tell us, so-and-so, at this scene, you're talking too slow. You need to pick up your pace. I mean, he was like back to back to back. We loved it. Everyone, Tommy and Millie, not one of us, not one time ever got angry with him. And I mean, that man raked us over the coal. When we won, that man cried. He came over, gave me a hug, said, Patty, I love you. I won first place in the state for my oral interpretation. I never won a thing in my life. That man was pulling for us. He was for us, not against us. And he nitpicked and nitpicked. And we would tell him, whatever you see, tell us. Don't let anything slide. We invited him in to nitpick. Some of you in your life, in your walk with the Lord, you don't want anybody nitpicking because you feel picked on when God oftentimes is using these people to help you Win the race. God is your Dr. Salisbury. 
picking, pulling, fussing, correcting, rebuking, exposing, and you feel picked upon. But that's love. There was no doubt in our mind that Dr. Salisbury loved us. He was so in our corner. He saw the potential. You know, the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is required. And you will find that those that have the most in their arsenal, those that have the most in their bucket of gifts, are going to go through a lot more. And the reason they go through a lot more is God is using life to nitpick at you, to bring the scum in your flesh to the surface, to let the leprosy break out on your walls, break out in the plaster, break out in the curtains. He's allowing it to show. He's allowing you to show your behind and get embarrassed from time to time because he's pointing his finger saying, I want to deal with that. I want you to come to me and deal with that. Don't just see it as an idiosyncrasy. See it as the nasty side of your flesh that needs to be removed. That needs to be uprooted by my holiness. Do you want to win? Do you want to be used? Do you want the anointing of God? Well, baby, get ready for the crushing. Because olives must be crushed in order to pull out the oil. That's the word.